everyone, and welcome to Drumio Live Monday. What's up? <laughs> Dave, Monday. drumming live number 92. 92. It's yeah. 92 what now. What are we going to do for 100? I don't know Ooh, yet. that's a good question. <laughs> you guys see what I got on it? I know, I like it. I, I, I always think I'm just like, I, I think I look like a little kid. Hiya, sport. How are you guys doing today? Ready to go to the park and play some ball? <laughs> <laughs> I think you look like a trucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or a trekker. I wore that the other day, and some, everybody wanted me to play Convoy. <laughs> <laughs> Today is going to be a very, very fun lesson. I'm very, very excited to finally be back. It's been a while since I've been in here. We got oh. the Savage Beast. Yes. We got Cajun Spice over here. Yes. Uh, a lot of you guys don't know Nate yet. Nate's going to be. Oh, that's right. This is the perfect lesson for you to, to join us in because uh, we're launching a new thing where we launch a play along every single Friday, and those play alongs are going to be written by the Savage Beast. Yeah. Yes. Do you, do you hate that name? No, I like okay. it. <laughs> the, the we kind of gave you that one. I've had worse. Way worse. <laughs> yeah. Holy smokes. Um, and so, Dave, today you're going to be talking about practicing with play -alongs. Yes. And this is like all the technical stuff we've talked about in the past, finger control, moving around the drums, expressing yourself in the drums. It all comes down to actually playing with music. And so mm -hmm. this is one of those lessons where you get to apply all, your, all the hard work that you guys have done. Um, before we jump into that, there's a few things I want to go over. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Dave has a really bad voice today, and so I don't know what he was doing, but yeah. his throat is all sore and he I'm can a, hardly talk, and so I'm going to do most of the talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys uh, want to enter the competition, every Monday we do competitions, and um, all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash drumio, and you have to tell us what's your favorite song to play along with. That's it. Oh. Nate, what's your favorite song? Uh, favorite artist to play favorite along song. with. Favorite song that you like to jet because you're mainly guitarist. I like to play the collective soul stuff. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Just because Dance. it's not that hard for me because I'm sort of like middle beginner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like uh, Our Lady Peace, Navid. It was like one of the, this, that snare drum in oh, there. Yeah. I was crank up my snare drum. It's a it's a relatively <laughs> easy song, yeah. and it's a total '90s like it suits this hat. <laughs> but uh, it's a yeah. fun song. Cool. But we'll ask you later, Dave. Sure. Um, but if you guys want to win, we're giving away two drum play along systems, which are DVDs, CDs, and you get a workbook with it. Um, also, you'll get access to the online version in Drumio as well. Um, so we're giving two of those away, and we're giving two one month Drumio memberships. So you, you guys can just, it's 37, that's $37 value. You get that for a month, and um, you get to hang out with us and all the, all the Drumio members, which is, I think, the best community on the internet. Hands it down, is. I Hands believe down. it is the best community on the internet. Yeah. Uh, we got lots of people in there, Dave. William, Osiris, Dillick, Bear, Mikey Mayhem, David, Jake C. Jake C's online, later. good. Yeah. Cool. cool. But I should not continue talking. Um, you should I should. Start I should take talk. over now? This is the point where Dave <laughs> starts to talk. Or I start to teach something, maybe. Uh, well, like, like Jared said, um, oh, okay. yeah. we have done so many lessons, especially free ones, too, with uh, lessons on technique. Uh, last week, Sean was talking about flat foot, or was that two weeks ago? Um, and we talked about finger control. We've talked, we just have so many technique-based lessons. And what I wanted to do is teach you guys a little bit. I mean, most of you guys might already know this, and you might already do this already, which is awesome. But bear with us if you haven't yet, because this is a really cool concept. And it's just basically how to practice with play-alongs, how to actually set up your own little re regiment, and how to utilize some of the resources that you have. Maybe it's online through freedrumlessons.com. Maybe you have a drumming system, drum play-along system. But it's a, it's a way to actually utilize what you've been practicing into real musical applications. And I booked this lesson, what, about three months ago, before we even knew Savage uh, Beast was going to be with us here. <laughs> the Savage Beast. The Savage yeah. Beast. <laughs> but uh, the cool thing about that is um, every week, Nate's going to be writing a new play along for everybody in Drumeo and um, it's going to be really cool so if you have like any patterns or songs or, or um, exercises that we're learning through Drumeo you can get a play along written just it's, specifically for that and if I could just say one thing it's important that we get feedback from the community and you guys tell us you know what style of, of play along you want because we don't Nate has lots of styles of music that he loves but if we get like 20 requests for a country play along or 20 requests for a metal play along that's what he's going to write that's, I want them to be used as much as possible. Yeah. Because that's the point of this whole thing is to play music, right? So. Right. Cool. I'm going to get you to make some pretty cool ones, some nice. odd time ones, seven, eight to five, to, yep. to three to nine. Sure. Just a challenge. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a few different ways that you can pl practice with these play-alongs. And if you didn't uh, if you didn't join us or if you weren't <laughs> here for the be uh, very beginning, I just played along to a song called Tomorrow. It's by the band I'm in, Yuka. And uh, the reason why I played that for you is because I wanted to show you that's me playing the actual song. You heard the drum beats. It's very straight ahead. It's nothing really too technical or, or there's no double bass in there at all, really. And um, I'm going to get to that a little bit later of how you can actually practice along with that exact same song, but actually change it up so you're working out either your feet or your hands uh, or your mind or whatever it is that you want to work out. And there's many, many different things that you can do with this. Uh, the one thing I like to do is on my iPod, I like to create my own playlist and it's called the Drum Practice Playlist. And I'll have anywhere from five to, well, I have about 50 songs in there, but I'll go through about five of them to 10 of them before each uh, time I actually sit down and practice because it's a great warm up. And you can also always think about it as like, um, I don't know, one of those Richard Simmons exercise little uh, tapes where you have the songs that you <laughs> practice along with. <laughs> I don't know, um, but uh, you can consider it something like that. So the very first thing I'm going to do is, is um, I'm going to work out my hands, okay? And a lot of you guys who have been practicing single strokes, double strokes, paradiddles, that's three very common rudiments that uh, people practice all the time. They usually practice with a click track, right? True. Hopefully you practice it with a click track, okay? But um, that gets boring. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to take that exact same concept, just going to go back and forth from singles to doubles to paired to those. I'm going to play that and practice that with a play along, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, but what I'm going to do with the first one, I'm not going to even play on the kit. Maybe I will down the, uh, you know, halfway through the song, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you just how you can just play Single stroke roll going from maybe eight bars of a single stroke roll, eight bars of a double stroke roll, eight bars of a paradiddle. Keep going back and forth, but play that along to music. And what that's going to do for you, it's going to allow you to track your progress. You can be able to uh, uh, know, okay, well, I can do eight bars of single stroke roll, and then I have to stop. Then I can do another eight bars of single stroke roll for the course, and then I have to stop. It allows you to track your progress a little bit better. Yeah, I would always do that with uh, practicing just single stroke roll and double bass. Just put, put on a song that it'll somewhat fit, that doesn't necessarily have it, and then add it in. I know you've talked about that before as well. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, well, I thought it was common knowledge, you know, most people do that, but I'm actually surprised how a lot of people actually don't, don't utilize this. Um, and another cool thing about it is pick a subdivision. I know the song that I'm going to be playing here, it's a rock play along, and it's from, oh, what is it from? I think it's from Bass Drum Secrets, to be honest. And uh, this is a play along from that track, and it's 80 beats per minute. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be practicing 30 second notes. Okay. okay? So six Just eight notes. Not the whole time. N not the whole time. Well, I'm going to go back and forth okay. from single strokes to double strokes to paradiddles. Okay. okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how just by 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 practicing along with this play along song, you're working out your internal clock. It's a lot more fun. You can kind of track your progress, and you don't you're not set to when you're tired you stop. You're set to when the song ends you stop. Okay, Kyle, do you want to get uh, the rock play along ready to go? And another thing I'm going to say is. I'm going to play just on the snare drum first, and because we're short for time, I'm going to show you what I can do. I'm going to play just single strokes, double strokes, and paradiddles. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paradiddle, I'm going to play it around the kit just to uh, expand what I'm practicing, but I'm not going to break away from those three rudiments, okay? You ready to go, Kyle? Coming up. Coming up. Let's do it. Anytime.
<laughs> but it was a lot. But it was a good workout, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not about being. It's not about uh, you know playing what the song requires. It's about practicing something opposing that, or even practicing just to that pulse. Right. You know what I mean? And you, well, you were you were actually doing something a little bit different in that you were. It wasn't like st- rigid all the time. You were actually playing with some sort of feel. You were actually adding in dynamics. I, I don't know if people notice that. Yeah. But it it is more of an like even just listening to that. If I listen to you do that with a metronome, oh. I would be bored. Yeah. Whereas if I listen to you just do like practice like that, it's a heck of a lot more interesting than yeah. the metronome. Yeah, and for yourself too. And and one thing I, I had a note in here that I wanted to mention is when you're doing this and you have music behind it, you're constantly thinking about the music and then all of a sudden these rhythms that you're trying, you're forcing yourself to play only doubles, singles and paradiddles, all of a sudden those become more musical to you and you can see how you can use them. I mean, when I went to the beat, it was a little bit sloppy, but I was trying to figure out that groove. Uh, then when I went over on the toms, you know, accenting on the ones with the, with the paradiddles, I was trying to put some musical uh, um, ambition behind it. Right. And that's something that you can't really do. Well, you, you can't with a click track but it's a lot harder um, and what I would recommend is maybe find a song that's right in your tempo range where you can really play um, almost as fast as you possibly can okay if you can play um, 200 beats per minute with a single stroke and doubles and paradiddles find a song that you know play along hopefully that's that tempo put it in your practice routine um, playlist and then when you get to that song you know okay this is my three minute time to really work on my on my sticks and I was even doing singles around the toms you know if you're on a practice pad do the exact same thing just nothing but singles doubles and that is a great way just to focus on practicing with your hands yeah play and, and drum your live members as we continue to develop the the section uh, where you can actually download play alongs you'll be able to filter them by tempo or speed oh. and stuff like that mm-hmm. um, we're in the process of actually developing a tools section for you guys and so that's going to be really fun that's going to come up in the next uh couple weeks probably and then there'll be a tons of tools that we have yeah. more than just play alongs too but excellent yeah okay let me move on okay so I've got a practice routine set up now for my sticks. I know if I really want to practice, and you can do that whole song just with single strokes. You can do the whole song just with double strokes. You can go, um, if you wanted to drop it down to subdivision, do eighth note triplets. You can do like fly and accents or whatever. You just pick a rhythm that you really want to work on, find a tempo, and play it to a play along. Pat a flaffa. <laughs> <laughs> Pat a flaffle, there you go. Um, but now I'm going to go on to working out my feet, okay? So now I've got my hands uh, down, and this is something that I, I did religiously when I was practicing for Bass Drum Secrets. I had a couple songs, I had like a couple Dragon Force songs in there, whatever whatever I found that was a challenge to me. Um, I found some play-alongs that were at, you know, around 180 to 200, and that would just really burn my feet out. I'm going to do the exact same song that I did in the beginning. I'm not going to do the whole song, so Kyle, feel free to stop it maybe halfway through because we are in a time crunch here. Right. But I'm going to play tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. Tomorrow? tomorrow? Play right now, please. I'll play right now. I'm going to play the song <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play as much double bass as I possibly can. Okay. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. You can with double bass. But the whole idea the whole idea behind it is, again, not to worry about what the song sounds like. I'm going to play what I play over, over top of it. But I'm just going to add six eight notes. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two with my feet. Okay. And um, if I get tired, and this is something that I really want to talk about, how I approach play-alongs is when I get tired, I'll just drop one of my feet out mm-hmm. and take a bit of a break. And I'm going to purposely do that just so you can see um, if you do get tired, it's a great way to take a big a bit of a break and then get back into it. Okay. Kyle, you got tomorrow right back ready to go? My man? Coming up, all right. Here we go. This is the double bass version of you guys. <laughs> Stop the song! 
Here we go. Jared was doing his machine gun. While we were doing <laughs> the, the whole time. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I think that song tracks because I have this in the play along too. By the way, guys, download the play alongs. I've given you five play alongs today for this lesson to give you something to practice along with. This song's included, and it's 148 beat per minute, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a great warm-up for your feet, and when you have that in your playlist, there's the next song. Now it's time to warm up my feet, so there you go. Now I've got that ready, and I stopped a few times. <coughs> I stopped a few times to warm up or to let my left foot cool down, then I went right back on into it. Yeah. And, and Marcos, actually, one of the questions he asked right before you, you went into this is, uh, you can practice with the foot techniques yeah. with play-alongs as well. Totally. And obviously the answer is yes, that's no problem. So. Yeah. And, like, something that I wanted to talk about, I talked a little bit about the sticks, about subdivisions, too. If you're playing a song at that speed, or even faster, like... And that's a little bit too fast, but you can only do bursts at that speed. Then maybe drop it down a whole, like, no foul, maybe drop it down to eighth notes instead, and then do bursts of sixteenth notes, or eighth note triplets, something like this. You know, you don't have to always just be blasting 16ths, and, and I like to encourage you, just, uh, you guys to push it a little bit. And the nice thing about doing this with the play-alongs is you can choose, for the whole verse, I'm going to do 16th notes. For the pre-course, I'm going to do 16th note triplets. I'm going to challenge myself a little bit more, and then I'm going to be tired, so for the course, I'm going to go to 8th notes. And then you can kind of keep progress, track your progress, and then as you progress, like a couple months down the road, you're going to be able to do the whole song at 16th note triplets. That's sweet. It's really cool. Cool. Okay, moving on. Yes. Yeah. Okay, what time do we got, by the way? Because we got a couple uh, of We have four, 4.20 right now. Oh, perfect. We're uh, rocking and rolling. Yeah. And, and so for you guys who are just showing up here, if you want to enter in the competition, um, all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash drumeo and tell us what's your favorite song to play along to. If you are chosen, you will win. <laughs> one, one of two, one of two things. I'm not. Well, let's see. You will win that drum. One drum. of two drum play along systems. Right. It's his first time. Right? Uh, one, one. one of two drum play along systems, or uh, one of two monthly one memberships month to Drumio. Drumio yeah. monthly memberships. Now, if you already own a Drumio membership and you win, um, we just love if we'd love it if you guys just gifted that to one of your drummer friends or something like that because I think it's a really cool resource to tap into. And uh, yeah, I honestly, I said at the beginning, it's the best drum community in the world hands down yep okay excellent um, another great thing you can practice I'm not going to play a, do a play along to this but um, I'm just going to show you another idea is practicing specifically practicing showmanship stuff and uh, a lot of people don't even get a chance to practice showmanship, showmanship uh, things because they never get to, to a part where they're actually playing with music or they're doing like show covers or, or sorry practicing for a show um, so with with uh, practicing with play-alongs it gives you an opportunity to see how it is to actually throw your stick in the air catch it <laughs> while staying on time because a lot of people they get they just sit there and they twirl the stick and they practice that, but actually doing this behind a kit and actually being able to go back to your beat, that's tough, you know? So if you were to do, um, an, an idea would be play four, um, uh, sorry, four bars of a verse, and then right before you go into the solo or the chorus, whatever, throw your stick like this, do like a little stick twirl. And this one's a great one, you just toss your stick up in the air, open up your fingers, grab it again, just like that. Okay, so an idea for that, if you have a play along, you can maybe do every time we can switch from the chorus to the verse, we do this uh, little st stick twirl, which will look like this. So I was doing actually every bar then, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you can do that kind of stuff with the whole play along and it gets you really used to practicing tossing your sticks up in the air, even if you wanted to do the, the just one twirl toss, I think that's your specialty, right? Um, the one twirl toss? I guess, I don't want to say twirl? specialty. That's your specialty. You can do that pretty good. Yeah. I also have the... Um, <laughs> 
I don't know. I, I the fake, can't the do faux it, twirl but. here. Uh, anyway, we're not talking about stick showmanship. We're just talking about uh, practicing those with play lines. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. So continuing along with this, <clears throat> I'm also going to go into practicing odd time. Now, odd time is something that uh, uh, most drummers like to shy away from beginner levels and, and stuff, but get used to it as soon as you can. Get a play along that's in seven, get a play along that's in five, put it in your repetition or your rotation of songs that you practice along with. And um, it'll really challenge yourself. Now, I have a song on here from the drumming system. It's called Waves. Kyle, you want to get that one ready for me? Yep. Beautiful. This is a song in seven, and um, it's a lot of fun to play. And all I'm doing right now is I'm just going to play just I'm going to start playing basic seven. And then I'm going to challenge myself to just try new things. I mean, if I mess up, I mess up, but i got to get myself back in the seven feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, practicing along with the odd time play along, that's what you want to do. You want to just start by playing something very basic, on time with seven, something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One. You know, just something very basic. And then play that and try and keep on trying to add things to it, add some fills, maybe be creative, go to your ride, and then try and see if you can get the feel going. And what's going to happen is after you practice this every single time before you go on your kit, do this routine or whatever, you're going to start getting more and more comfortable with seven, eight. And then Makes I have sense. a song for you to try after you're done the... <laughs> okay, sure. The, the seven one. I won for you. Yeah. 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 Is it... Uh, you going to put me in the spot here? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, uh, Kyle, you got that ready? Okay. Here we go, right? <laughs> Okay, now I have, I have one for you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what is this? Okay, is this in, do you know what time signature this one's in? Let's see if he gets it. Oh, Mission Impossible? Turn it up. One, two, three, four, five. Mission five? Oh.
it, yeah. that, that's important, but it goes back to does it? Oh, man, I what I, I like about this one is it's not that time signature the whole time. Yes. Because it kind of gives you an opportunity to go in and out. Because it's rare that uh, you're playing with a song, even in, in prog music, that the whole thing Just is in one, one time yeah. signature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? that's a good point. Generally it switches and so. And everyone's saying, Everyone's saying no mission is impossible for Dave. How did you just slay it? Yeah, well, uh, um, as soon as I counted, because you guys, if you had problems counting a time signature, I just counted however long it took before the actual pattern repeated. We had that question, I think, on Friday. Yeah. Um, how do you determine its time? So I, right when I figured out it was five, just played the five groove, and then uh, I know mission impossible, the groove alone, and I'm like, oh, that goes back into a four. So yeah. cool. Cool. Okay. Do you want to give something away? Let's do it. Okay, so for those of you who just got here, we're going to give away two Drumio monthly memberships and... To play along. <laughs> Drum play along. <laughs> Drum play along. <laughs> I've been <laughs> shooting these all day on the computer. I should know this. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a little nervous because it's his, it's his That's first right. lesson. I'm, I'm not trying to read these packages. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so two Drum play along systems. The Drum play along systems, systems consist of 50 play along songs. And uh, you get a book with it. You also get full online access um, to the play-along system in the Drumio members area. So let's first give away the, the actual drum play-along system. Dave, so cool. I'm going to give you some letters, and you're going to tell me All right. which one you like. Okay. D, E, or A? Ooh. I'm going to go for the middle one. I'm going to go for E. Edwin R. Arosho. Edwin. He plays to Aerosmith. So Edwin, nice. my friend, oh, you win a drum play-along system package. Um, and just email Dave at Drumio.com. Is that going to be on the screen here? Dave at Drumio.com. If you email him, he can get you set up. I'll set you up. I'll get you online access too. Yeah. Cool. Um, should we give away one more? Let's give away the one more. Yeah. Okay. So another, for another Drumio or Drumio drum play along system. Okay. Uh, give E N. Or C. C. Wow. I knew it. Chris and Kim Lockhart. Ooh. ZZ Top's Lagrange. Ah, ZZ Top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lagrange? Is that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> so, man, uh, um, I don't know if it's Chris or Kim, or if your middle name is and Kim, but uh, <laughs> um, you win a drum play on system. So email dave at drumio.com and he'll get you totally set up. Cool. I also want to mention one more thing. Jake Carroll, you're uh, one of our Drumio members, Drumio Live members. We're going to be reviewing your video at the end of this. So yes. So make sure you stick around. And for any of you guys who are just watching live in public, we get the opportunity, we give the opportunity to all the Drumio members to submit themselves playing on the kit, a song, a cover, whatever it is, and we do reviews, feedback, almost like a one-on-one critique. And uh, I missed Jake's on Friday. We ran out of time, so I promised him I'd do it today. Always, yeah. they're all for threatening to, for me to do push-ups. Oh. I can't do push-ups. I'm not Dave that. is sick, you guys. You can't make him do push-ups yeah, today. This is my throat. We'll make him do double push-ups the next day. Is that how it goes? Yeah. yeah how about yeah, how, how <laughs> people? Some people are sending me some extremely hot hot sauce. How about I just do that instead? That would be funny. Okay. After less than time. Okay. Moving on. You're talking about working in different styles of music now. Yes. Okay. So another thing I wanted to do is uh, uh, or show you guys how you mm. should. Uh, how you should, how you can play along with different styles, mm-hmm. really challenge yourself and inspire yourself. And I force you guys, I want to force you guys to do this. Pick a song genre that you don't usually play. Now, I chose... Um, Physically force? Force. Like, if you don't do this, I got your IP addresses up oh. your house. No, I don't. It's actually. not true. It's not true. I wish I did. I don't. Anyway, no, so don't. What, what I want to do is... Pick a song genre that you're not used to playing. Jazz is a great one. A lot of rock beginner drummers do not play jazz. Uh, Latin is a great one too. In the play along p- bundle that I gave you in the zip, there is a mambo in there, and that's from the Latin drumming system, yeah. uh, and it's really cool. And what I want you to do with that is don't don't be uh, scared about it. Don't think you have to play all the fills. Don't think you have to play all the solos. If it's just a jazz tune, play the play along, but maybe only do the swing like this. And to make yourself look like you're playing jazz, you put your hand in traditional. Look at me, I'm a jazz drummer now, huh? 
No. No? No? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But um, just practice that. Practice just listening to the song and playing a simple pattern behind it. And what that's going to do is when you do get into jazz or even your rock playing, whatever you're playing, it's going to give you a different understanding and respect for it. You're training your mind to not only play, uh, training your, your wrists and your legs and your fingers. And training your mind is huge when it comes to the musicality of it. And if you never play jazz, if you never play 7-8, and if you never play the mambo and stuff, uh, not only are you not going to grow in those areas, but your other drumming is going to suffer because you're not going to have the independence. You're not going to be able to listen to what the other you know, band uh, members are doing. So I have one that I've been practicing. This is actually from um, one of the... Uh, DVD or CD packs that, uh, not CD packs, sorry, um, magazine they give you, you know, some of those magazines give you like little play along CDs, drum magazines. Well, I got one of these and this was one of them and it's great because there's a clave behind there. And what I like to do is I like to practice my left foot clave. Now I'm not really good at it yet, but I'm practicing it. And what I have on my routine is this song. And whenever it comes on, I know it's time for it. What is it? A three minute practice session just on my left foot clave. Okay. And I'm going to practice. I'm going to just do the clave first. I'm going to practice whatever on my snare. Maybe I'll try to put in like a little songo pattern there, but this is just to practice my left foot clave and independence through a play along instead of a click track. Here we go. So you get the idea. Right. And throughout that whole the whole time, I wanted to make sure I was doing my left foot clave. And then I'd mess up, so I'd get back to the clave, I'd take my hands away, get right back to what I was really wanting to practice. And then halfway through, I'm like, or towards the end, I took my clave and I just practiced the songo pattern, because you can do whatever. That was a track that I had chosen just because I like to practice my left foot independence, right? right? But um, if you want to just practice the songo pattern, just practice that over top of it. But the trick is to find a song that you know really challenges you. Um, one that I've been working on for the longest time, and I'm actually Actually, um, to the point where I could probably do a play along of it sometime, maybe. But uh, is a is a Weckl track, and I chose a song that was so challenging for me that I knew it was going to take a long time to learn. Yep. And every practice session, I would practice it, and I would just burn and crash and burn. But I would keep the time, and I would just force my way through the song. Then the next song came along, and I was already on to the next part of my practice. But over time, I got really good at it. I was able to hear what the band was doing. I was able to to you know develop my hands and. Now I can play along with it. So that's the next step is to choose a song that's challenging for yourself and then put it into your regiment. Yeah. Okay. Very, very cool. And I want to mention the play alongs that Dave was playing to earlier. Um, one of them was from the drumming system, which is also available in our Drumio members area or at drummingsystem.com. And uh, that's by Mike Makaku. Very, very cool yes. play along. And in that, the, the one in seven that uh, you heard Dave playing with, that is actually just one other instrument. And that's a guy named Jim Meyer from Vancouver here. And it's like a bass and guitar at the same time. A Chapman stick. Yeah. A Chapman, Chapman stick, stick, yeah. yeah. Really and cool. it's uh, <clears throat> crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I, I remember watching him do it, and I'm like, where's the what other the guitar? It's like it? this. Yeah. Really cool. But uh, yeah, it's, those, are all from the, those two are from the drumming system. The rock one where I practiced with my hands, that one was actually from... Um, Bass drum secrets. Yep. Okay. But we're uh, in the process of building the tools into Drumio Live, though, so you members will have a big, big um, bunch of play alongs as well. Cool. Okay, I've got, um, uh, actually, I've got 
Yeah, I'll, I'll do one more here for you because okay. we do are running out of time. We I got hopefully there's a couple questions, maybe one or two. Um, okay, the last one I'm going to show you is just a trading fours play along. Jared, you did this one when you were talking about soloing, right. and what I really like about this one is it gives you a chance to really work on your timing and your internal clock because you're going to be playing fills for four bars straight and have to come back in without speeding up or slowing down. So it really forces you to work on your um, um, uh, your internal clock. It also gives you an opportunity to practice some of these fills, beats, or patterns that you've been learning through drumming or the drumming system and just rotate them over and over and over again in a musical setting, okay? For example, this time I'm gonna practice I'm going to choose three things I'm going to practice. I'm going to practice my 60 note triplet fills. I'm going to practice some linear patterns. And then I'm going to practice some hand to feet combination um, um, throughout this whole play along. You got this one lined up for us, Kyle? Ready to go. Ready to go? Okay, so play it, play it and uh, we'll uh, see what happens. That flawless play along, eh? That's good, man. <laughs> not single, hey, not a single error. This is what you're supposed to. He's working that out to practice, and yeah. so I think that's. Uh, I, get, I think that's the point. Is when you practice, it's not fully mistake free all the time. When mm -mm. you practice, you do make little errors because you're practicing stuff that you're not 100% confident at. Mm -hmm. So if you're not making little little errors, then you're not doing something right, or you're playing something that you already know how to play. Or you're sticking to your textbook safety. Yeah. Yes, you, know, you always want to be pushing the boundaries. Yeah. And the one cool thing that I like about this is, um, I mean, this is a concept that I do all the time. So when I was when I was preparing this lesson, I'm like, you know, I'll just you know, we'll improv improvise what you're going to be playing in there. And that's the best thing is um, you have no idea what exactly you're going to play, but it's forcing you to be creative on the spot, right? Yeah. And um, getting getting fast with those six you know, triplets, being able to go all around the drums, you know, uh, or with the hand to feet combinations, or with the um, linear patterns that I was doing. It was all improv on the spot, and that's what you want to be practicing, and the timing is really important and all that. So mm -hmm. it'd be cool to take a, a play along like that, take the click out, and see if your internal clock mm -hmm. can come back right, right when the song starts again. Right. right? Uh, cool. Uh, well, we ready to take some questions? Yeah, let's take some questions. Okay, before yeah. we take questions, you guys, this is your last chance. Go to facebook.com forward slash Drumeo and tell us what's your favorite song to play along to. We still have two one-month Drumeo memberships to give away. Each of them are worth 37 bucks. So. Yep. Just for leaving a comment on Facebook and liking our page, it's, it's a pretty good chance. Um, yeah, there's not many other places you can get that kind of chance. <laughs> no. Uh, the second thing I want to say is if uh, Drumeo members, if you guys have questions now, we're going to kind of get to those. And then we're going to review Jake's video. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's it. So, Dave, you ready to go? Yeah, let's quickly do it. 
<clears throat> um, Rick Ross says he's never played in a band before. Do you have any tips for getting in sync with a bass player? And I know this might be good for Nate because Nate's an actual bass player as well. And so what do you look for when you're playing bass with a drummer? What are you kind of keeping your ears peeled for? First of all, I talk to him about it. I mean, hey, let's match up. Second of all, I, if he's not there yet, I just watch him. Yeah. I just lock on his foot mm -hmm. and go from there. Would you expect a drummer to do that back to you then? Hopefully, yeah. But um, I, I played a lot of church gigs where the drummers are like upper beginners and they're not thinking about it. They're thinking about getting my right. feels right, right? So Yeah. But, you know, if I'm going to a pay gig or something, yes, I would definitely expect... The yes. drummer to be like, Zzz. and if you if you're a drummer that doesn't have a, a bass player who's as smart as Nate that actually will look at that and he's just playing his own thing, then it's your job to listen to him. Right. And uh, the one that's thing else, the case a lot. So it is. seems to be especially with bass players. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, what uh, what I wanted to bring to that is exactly what we're talking about here: pra practicing with play-alongs. When you, even if you're doing just the snare drum thing or in a practice pad, listen to the other musicians while you're doing it. You might be playing a paradiddle groove that does not fit in there, and you're going to be able to hear that. You're going to be able to hear that's contrasting with the bass player but um, getting out of that comfort zone and doing that is going to force you to, yeah. uh, to get into those situations Dave the Wave asks what hi-hats are those ah uh, so I brought in my cymbals today everyone this, these, these are 14 inch Peisty um, signature reflector series the reflector series all around except yeah. for this one Daniel J. Jones says it's not a question, but he got to say he loves my shirt. Honey Badgers are so hardcore. That's right. <laughs> if you guys, uh, bef uh, before I got this shirt, I actually never knew what it meant. So before I actually wore it in a video, I'm like, okay, I have to figure out what this means. And so I went and Googled it. Oh, and uh, if you Google, um, it it's just Honey Badgers don't carry it, you'll figure out what's this all about. <laughs> uh, um, should you have, uh, a potato says, should you have the play along louder? then you can hear your drumming. So should the play alone be really loud in your ears or should the drums be really loud? Um, that's a, a personal uh, question because some people like to be able to hear the drums. I mean, I'm deaf. I like to hear the play along as loud as I possibly can. It's true. Very true. But um, one thing I will say, if you do turn it down, uh, you can challenge yourself by working on your internal clock that way. Um, and there's an, always a situation where you're playing a song and it's hard to hear another instrument in the band or you're in a live setting and you're on like a stage where all of a sudden the uh, monitor falls and you can't hear. So it is sometimes good to practice that when you're just having to force yourself to play and listen at the same time. So. Underdog91 says, every time I go to play play along with a song I use small headsets and I can barely hear the music also I'd like to create drum covers but don't know how to get started what like what things would you need okay um, what what do you we recommend and so I'll, I'll take the the, the headsets one mm -hmm. it sounds like what's happening is you either don't have enough level so you can't get them loud enough or they're not um, they don't fully cover your ears and so if, if your ears are still open and you're getting a lot of the sound of the drums in you're not going to be able to get enough volume on them as well as you're gonna probably hurt your ears because that's your drums are going to be so loud for uh, for so long, especially in the longer practice sessions. So I'd get some headphones that go over the ears, or get in-ear headphones. Mm -hmm. Any any sure in-ear monitors that are around a hundred dollars are are a decent set. Cool. That's and when it comes down to writing or creating your own play-along videos for YouTube, anything works. I've even seen some of the members in Drumio use their iPhone with a stereo. Um, and if you want it to be a little bit more professional, you can actually just use Movie Maker, which yeah. is something on Windows, and then iMovie, which is on Mac. Yeah. And you can really just put audio over top of it. It's pretty easy. And those do. are free. You basically put your headphones in, record and film yourself playing to the song so you have the video of it. Okay, then take the audio track and drag that into iMovie or Movie Maker and just line those two up. So you're yeah. going to have one audio track, one video track. And you line them up so they both start at the exact same spot in the song and um, that should work. And mm -hmm. it's, it's relatively easy to do. Yeah. Okay, moving along. What's the size? Of the, someone asked what's the size of the mounted floor tom? Mar Marcos asked that. That's actually, oh it is a mounted floor tom. And that's a 16 inch. Crazy. Yeah. It's a nice sounding drum. Yeah. David Ivy says, sometimes when I play a song, I tend to fall back or, and so I don't have, and so I know, have no idea how to get out of that habit. So he's falling back on the beat. Okay. And he's tried to use a metronome to keep me in time, but sometimes he gets into the song too much and the sound of the metronome gets lost. What are your tips? Well, if the sound of metronome is getting lost, hopefully that's because you're burying it. But uh, it sounds like he's falling a little bit behind. Um, what my tip is for that is to obviously keep the music really loud so you can hear where you're going and be mentally aware of that. And the one cool thing about recording yourself is you'll be able to tell right away if you're behind or ahead of the click and just be conscious of that. 
um, try to force up to play faster and play less. We were, me and Jared were talking actually just before this lesson, and it's more important that you're on time than it is how cool and flashy your fills are, or if you're playing the exact same beat. Um, yeah. It's more important that you're on time. Yeah, you got to have time. It's the first thing. Yeah. Um, David Ivey also asks, whenever he plays to a soundtrack, he never counts. He just gets into the feel of the song. And I think he's seeing you're counting a lot. And so should he do that, or should, should sometimes you just go into it? Well, the counting that I do is it's it's because I'm trying to decide what kind of subdivision that I want to practice on, especially when we're doing uh, double bass or hands. I want to know what kind of uh, six eight notes, what speed they're going to be at. Um, but it's all about feel, man. If and if you can feel that pulse rather than having to count it, that's where you want to get to. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's what I, I mean. It's just a matter of getting more comfortable with right. with, with feeling it. Um, Nick Savard asks, is there any tips on developing an internal clock? And uh, one thing I like to do here is um, play along with the metronome for a while and then turn the volume right off, like mute it, and then continue playing, and then unmute it and see how close you are. You're going to actually do it? Yeah, well, I'm going to show them another thing too, but keep okay. going. And so what will happen is the metronome volume will go off, but the metronome is still going to be going. And when you turn it back on, you're going to see how much you've actually shifted. And you can just really, really focus and hone in and stay right on time. Um, and then that'll really, really help if you, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not like a, a month of developing your internal clock and you have it, it's 50 years or 30 years, <laughs> like, it doesn't end, and so you'll get better and better over time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one one uh, exercise I'm going to show you guys is by playing a uh, rudiment or an exercise with a click track going and then cut that click in half and keep doing the same exercise, mm -hmm. and it's going to take away that pulse. So if I'm going to play a single stroke roll with 120 beats per minute. Um, at 30 at beats a minute. No, at 40 beats a minute. Hey? Oh, just one sec. Just one oh, sec. Okay. I'll, I'll go to 100. Uh, I get what you're saying. But if I'm going to play at 100 beats per minute at 60 notes, it'll sound like this. Okay? So I'm going to keep doing the exact same uh, uh, speed with my hands, but I'm just going to cut the, ha or the click in half. I'm going to go to 50 beats per minute. I have a feeling I'm just going to bomb this one. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it only goes down to this. It's going to fall off his throne. So I'm going to do the same speed, but there's half as many clicks. So it's going to really force myself to think about the click and make, make sure I'm on time. Um, Franco says, is there any difference if I start playing single strokes with the double pedal with my left foot or should I always start with the right foot? So he's talking about leading with the left or leading with the right. It's good to, per to be able to lead with your left. However, I would recommend practicing leading with your right because the most, uh, most of the time I lead with my right. I rarely lead with my left, but it's good to make sure you can at certain times. Yeah. Uh, and if you're unless you're a left-handed drummer, then it's a little bit different. Every drummer is a little bit different. Like I was, I have uh, watched Akira Jimbo video a while ago, and he leads it with his left. Yeah, Anytime I'm he sure, does, I'm sure he can do whatever he wants, whatever <laughs> he wants. <laughs> um, Sugarcane says, "What is the difference between hand to feet and linear patterns?" You know, hand to feet pa combination patterns are linear, and I thought about that as I had said it too, well, most of the time, because I was doing yeah. some hand to feet combination patterns where I was playing like. A, I, I, yeah, I would say the hand to feet patterns generally incorporates more into your fills. Yeah. Different patterns that work with fills, whereas linear patterns, yes, they can work as fills, but they also work great as beats and other things like that. And so that's why we refer to them differently. Very good. Very good answer. Oh, thanks, David. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, Mikey Mayhem says, how would you approach playing a song that incorporates lots of symbols if you only have a few? He's been having a tough time finding things to fill the spaces in songs from bands like Dream Theater, Amon Ar Amarth, uh, because I only have a kind of, I'm not a metalhead. <laughs> only have a crash and a ride symbol. And you know, thanks, you played great today, Davey boy. Oh, thanks. Is that Mikey? Yeah. yeah Mikey, yeah. Mikey, um, I did, I'm sure you've seen it, I did uh, Panic Attack from Dream Theater with two crashes, a splash, and a ride. Um, Portnoy in particular, you'll notice that he is a cymbal junkie like every four almost every four beats he's hitting a crash or even you know, every two beats he's hitting a crash right but it's okay because he's got so many cymbals and it's prog but if you're trying to do that when you only have uh, you only have one cymbal 
find two different zones on your symbol that you can hit and be really creative with that. Um, for example, instead of always crashing your symbol like this, You know, you can use the tip, you can use the edge, you can use some swells, you can use some cymbal chokes, you can change it up a lot. You know, there's just so many different yeah. things. I'm getting fingerprints all over my cymbals. Yeah. <laughs> so many different things you can do. Yeah, I would say dynamics, like hit a soft and then yeah. louder, and then you get two sounds, right? You hit, get the, the initial sound, then one where it really opens up. Yeah. I've had that to do that a lot. I've had to play a, a gig with just a splash before. Oh, really? Um, Captain Bob says, do we play along doing what we can, or just do, do we just try and imitate the original? Or just have fun and do a little uh, bit of both? Captain Bob, I'm so glad you asked this question. This is the whole point of the lesson, is not to do what the play along requires. You can, it's a lot of fun, but make sure that you have certain, and almost like build your own workout, you know? I would say take five to ten songs, put it in a playlist, and have one song just for training your rudiments. Maybe take the double stroke, um, single stroke, and pair it in like I did. Then do one song just to train your feet, and then do one song to train maybe just your speed on everything. Like there was a when I was practicing way back in the day, I really wanted to get fast with punk rock. So there was a song called "The Decline" by No Effects. It's a 17 minute burn, but man, when I was done that, I was sweating, I was warmed up, I was ready to go. That was my workout. It's like like I was saying before, that was my Richard Simmons workout yeah. routine, right? So Captain Bob, do that. Find songs that really challenge you. Maybe it's just a tempo. Uh, I know a lot of Blink-182 songs are around 200 beats per minute. That's great for de developing your, your single strokes. Um, Razum asks, do you practice songs with the drums still in the mix? What Dave is doing here, there's no drums in the mix, but a lot of times we'll, we'll do that. And so yep. that's whatever song you can get your hand on. Ray Ray 92 is asking, Nate, what do you expect <coughs> as a guitarist from a drummer when you're doing a guitar solo? Because he has trouble complimenting his guitarist when he's soloing. Um, follow me dynamically that's probably the big it's, it's a big crescendo generally it's a big crescendo mm -hmm. right yeah yeah so not even just dynamics but as far as busyness too okay so follow on yeah. both of those things cool very, very cool type um we are going to give away two drumio memberships but i first want to review jake's video yes okay so let's take a look at that let me just bring it up here and so like dave said this is something we do for our drumio live members is we like to you know, actually look at what they're practicing, look at where they're at, and then give them tips based on the videos that they share, based on audio, based on any form of medium that they share stuff with us. And, and so we're going to bring up his video here, and we actually watched this a little bit before, so I'm not going to show you guys the whole thing. Shall I plug it in? Yeah, there? plug it in, pass me, I'll show them it on the gut cam here, and <laughs> um, I'll uh, fast forward a little bit into the, into the beginning. Okay. Jake, I hope you're online still. You were online in the beginning. Cool. Yeah. So, um, one thing we are noticing when we are listening or watching your video prior to us starting is the beginning. It sounds very out of time. I don't know if that's a sync with the video and the audio because later it actually gets a lot better. Um, so that's something you're going to have to let me know about. Uh, but one thing me and Dave both mentioned is, and this is something I've had to really work on, especially when recording, is don't play more than you're capable of right at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'll sometimes go in to do a session for someone and I'll, I'll play the track and I'll just try like some a little bit crazy fill that I'm probably comfortable with and I'll mess up and then I'll have to do the whole track again or I'll really embarrass myself. And, and that's kind of some of what I'm seeing and that, that's, I'm trying to be very constructive and I hope, I hope uh, I'm not, it's not sounding harsh or anything because you really do have awesome feel um, even the way that you hit the drums, you know, you see, you've got this nice fluid motion in each yeah. one of your strokes, and and um, you know, you're destined to have just unbelievable time if you just keep on practicing hard and stuff like that. And so, I was very, very impressed. Um, one other thing is, I don't know, like you seem like you're relatively tall based on the video. And so, are your drums set up low? Because I'm seeing the toms over from the bass drum and really, really low. And uh, I don't know if you moved everything up a little bit. You might be able to kind of get over that drum set better and uh, raise your seat up as well, and you might be more comfortable overall, especially with like the snare rim shots and your cymbal setup and everything like that. 
But I just recommend, you know, just experimenting and, and trying and doing a ton of different things. But do you cool. have any feedback? I have two things that I'm going to add to that. Uh, first off, Jake, awesome video. Uh, that was a Colbus Method cover, by the way, if yeah. anybody's wondering. It's off of the product, the Colbus Method. Yeah. And um, the one thing I was going to add is your symbols. When you're hitting your symbols, um, I'm not sure. Uh, you have them set up pretty high, and it's kind of hard to see the angle, but it sounds like you're almost coming over top of them and, and, and hitting them more with your um, tip of your stick. You're doing something like this. You know, and when it, when Jared was talking about dynamics too, maybe try and dig it a little bit more and find different zones of your symbols to be, to to bring the symbols out a bit more. Uh, you might have B8s or they sound like um, a pretty thick symbol, so it might be a little bit tougher. But be able to find the different zones and be able to make those symbols sing. So instead of hitting the tip all the time at a certain spot, try digging in with the with the uh, edge like this. And then as you notice, when I played my snare, I hit the cymbal a little bit louder to bring those two together and um, make them almost like one drum. Whereas with you, they sound like separate. Um, but that's just something that takes time. The other thing I was gonna say is you seem to be lifting your leg up pretty high when you're playing the bass drum. I noticed the camera is coming in on this side and uh, it's a lot of access energy wasted when you're kicking. You're almost almost hitting it way too hard. You can, uh, and if you watch my foot, I'll uh, show you what I mean by that. So you notice how when I'm playing there, just random uh, notes, my leg wasn't coming up too high and it was allowing me to maintain a lot of that energy instead of you, you're kicking your knee up pretty high. But other than that, awesome job, Jake. And again, everybody who's watching this who's not part of the community, we do this all the time. I just wanted to show you guys how we do it because there's a lot of people that are wondering, well, how do you submit videos and, yeah. and, and review it? And that happens. We have an area for that and each member has their own space that they can actually mm -hmm. you know, do whatever they want with and they can submit videos and then all of the artists actually check on those videos and stuff. Cool. Very, very fun. Yeah. Uh, we got two more Drumio monthly memberships to give away. So Dave, you need to give me, um, tell me what letter you like best, E, S, or A. I like E. E is Eric S-J-O-B-L-O-M. Slowdom? Slowdom? I don't know. He likes <laughs> to play Sharp Dressed Man by ZZ Top. Ah, nice. that's another good one. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, email me, dave at drumio.com, and I'll set you up with a free month. Yeah. Uh, the next one is... Okay, let me see here. Okay. <laughs> T-M or J? Oh, that's a tough one. T and J. I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with T. T is Teo Magic. He practices, this is, I'm glad you chose this one, because he practices the Rosanna Shuffle, one of my oh. favorite grooves, um, for the last few weeks, and he says he's still struggling. So I think, man, you're on, that's what you got to do with that track. Yeah. Just dig in. Dig in and play it every time. <laughs> and like I was yeah. telling you about before, if you have it on your own little playlist, it'll, and you do that playlist every time for a practice or before you practice, you're going to get good at it. Yeah. I, I, I practice on some songs that I'm still practicing, and I've been yeah. doing it for years. Cool. So cool. both of you guys, you email Dave at Drumio.com. He'll get you set up. And um, Dave and Ann Loft says she thinks you have the lurgy. I don't know if that's some sort of term I don't know about. <laughs> Is that an Australian bug, Ann? <laughs> because I know out here I've never heard of that. <laughs> Unless she's, somewhat, she's an Australian member. And, and uh, yeah. So you guys, if you haven't checked out Drumio, you go to Drumio.com. If you're watching this on YouTube or some other internet place that I have never yet discovered. Um, go to drumio.com, just check it out, and I, I think you're going to like what you find. And more importantly, um, like I always said, we have the absolute best community in the world, and uh, I hope you'll decide to join us. So thanks, Nate. No, thank yes. you. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming out, and thanks for putting up with me for an hour. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs> See ya.